and then go to the YouTube. All right, so this connection is excellent. I'm going to leave the audio off. That's good. All right, people's comments will be down here. Okay, that's all. That's all. That's all. All right, so we're not scoring yet. <laughs> so I have a practice target up because I'm not going to waste a brand new target to put three arrows in it and then take it down and put up my official target that I'm shooting at. So we're shooting at a used target for an end or two, depending on how much time I have, because I told everybody that I'm just going to start actually scoring at 1230 and it's like 1220 or so right now. So, shoot some arrows, get going, and then we'll throw up the correct target, take pictures, because I'm pretty sure I have to take pictures. We're taking lots of pictures. I haven't done this before, so <laughs> watch me watch me disqualify myself, but uh, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully not. I'm trying to make sure that I follow all the World Archery's rules. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, be sure to just, you know, let me know. Uh, we'll be taking questions and stuff between ends. Um, I got Dr. Judy uh, running all the production stuff. She's got the laptop back there. So she'll uh, be going through your questions and stuff that you uh, leave. And uh, we'll, we'll try to answer as many as we can. Put the camera nice and close too, so that you guys can actually see the arrow values pretty well. Um, I had it further out before when I was doing my test run this morning with this setup, because we were running four targets. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. <sighs> Definitely going a little bit right this, this morning. This afternoon. I'm sure, it's morning for somebody. <laughs> Good. All right, we got a whole bunch of arrows in the target. Let's go pick those and uh, see how much time we have before we're gonna officially score. Just the bow. Uh, somebody asked about the bow setup and the cost. Um, I don't know. We'll throw around like if you count arrows, probably like three thousand. I would. I would think. It depends because you can get a lot of stuff. There's a lot of good used archery equipment that you can pick up and save money without having to buy like the newest thing. New stuff is nice, but sometimes you can save money. Somebody's <laughs> All right, we should have time for another practice end, which is good because, uh, you know, I, I seem to be hitting <laughs> the right side of the target. So uh, we really do want to put these in the center. You know, believe it or not, that's it's kind of the goal. Um, so we're going we're gonna to try that. I'm going to shoot three arrows this time, uh, just like I'm going to do when we actually score. 
And uh, let's, let's see how it goes. Also, I was just shooting 70 meters like two days ago, so <laughs> I, I didn't really give myself too many, uh, uh, you know, I, I probably should have practiced more at 18, would have, would have been, would have been a better idea, but I really like 70. Now we're low. All right, still I think a little bit to the right. I'm gonna have to uh, go down there and see. I'll adjust the sight a little bit more. Uh, I like the Velos limbs compared to the MK Korea. Ooh. All right, Velos limbs compared to the MK Korea. I think the MK Korea ones are a little bit, like, a little snappier. Um, the Velos are smooth. Um, Possibly a little smoother. It's it's really tough because this is also a formula bow and I've shot uh, the MK limbs in an ILF and I need to do more work with the Hoyt Exceed to get that, uh, you know, set up and going. I've been a little slow on that, but I've been very busy, even though it's a good bow, but I've been really enjoying uh, this Hoyt Formula uh, XI here. But I think I think between the two... Um, they're, they're both great options. I think it's just a matter of, you know, what's available and, you know, what kind of bow, you know, what kind of riser you, you, you sticking it in. Um, especially since I have not used, uh, MK, you know, formula design limbs on a, on a Hoyt bow. So, uh, good question. Both good limbs though. I'm actually, I was, I was actually impressed. Um, Hoyt really, uh, put a lot of work into their, their Velos ones because, for the longest time, I personally felt that the MK products were definitely performing better, and they just felt better when you shot them. And uh, I've been really happy with how the Velos feel and how they react. So, good job for Hoyt. You know, competition is a good thing. Improves everybody. Uh -oh. What time is it? 12.30. Uh-oh. We have two more questions. What happened? Two more questions. Right. First, they said thanks for the feedback. Good luck. Um, what brand is the stabilization, and do you like Yucca limbs?
All right, so it's 1230, and like I promised, we're going to go do some scoring. Yeah, I probably could use another end of sighting in, but you know what? I said 1230, so we're going to start uh, scoring now. I replaced the target face down there. Mm. I, I got my phone down there, too, with the uh, Ionesco um, the Scorekeeper app, so we're going to go through that. Took a picture, if you saw, I took a picture of my target. Don't know if you're supposed to take it before you put arrows into it, but I haven't done this before, so I just really want to cover my bases and do it correctly. Uh, with that, we're going to be shooting three arrows uh, per end and be walking down every single time. Um, real quick, though, somebody asked me what type of stabilizer. This is the, uh, the Rev-X uh, by Shrewd, and I've been really happy with it. Uh, it's pretty cool because it has some internal dampening inside. So yeah, I got dampeners on it still, but you get extra dampening because they build it inside. Uh, they put them inside uh, the rods. So I think that's pretty sweet. And uh, it's been working great for me. I had a really awesome uh, outdoor season this year. Uh, really sh shot well, you know, score-wise. And, you know, not as many people showed up because of what's going on. So I did move up. Uh, some positions, but still, I think if it, if it was a normal year, I still would have moved up a few spots. I think I'm sitting in like 14, 15 now for the U.S., which is pretty exciting. So I can't wait to see how that goes on a uh, non-COVID year. I think that'll be uh, a really uh, great test, but ah, my last tour in the year was a 5, no, sorry, 621, so really excited about that. So now, let's get set, let's get going. Time to shoot some 18 meters, and the world's Indoor series, play play ball, you know. All right. It's making me nervous, jeez. <laughs> uh. Alrighty, there we go, that's the first end. The, the eight with the first shot wasn't exactly the most productive thing I've done, uh, but you know. <laughs> Don't have to worry about shooting a perfect score now, so that's that's taken care of. So we'll go down, tally it. Um, Dr. Judy's going to be running the uh, the paper. I have the electronic on my cell phone that's down there. I can't have my cell phone here because, ironically, we don't have. There's no Wi-Fi here. All these the camera you're seeing me through is all hardwired. It's all running on Ethernet. Have you ever tried ramrod stabilizers? Nope, oh, got another question about me trying ramrod stabilizers. I have not tried ramrod stabilizers yet. Um, hopefully soon, though, uh, we'll be able to uh, put something together with that because I am really interested. There's a lot of really talented archers that use their products, so I'm kind of curious on on testing them out myself and seeing how they work for me because you know <laughs> if you're shooting well you're not just going to shoot something to shoot you you know it must work for that particular archer so when you see a world-class shooter using a piece of equipment 
it's probably because they feel like it works well for them. There's, there's usually a reason because they're not going to sacrifice, uh, you know, their scores, especially if they're trying to move up, you know, in their field. They're not going to sacrifice it just just because. So I'm really interested because there's a lot of talented people that do use those products. So yeah, at some point in time we will uh, we will make that happen. All right, time to head down. Oh, great. I'm back. That was a 28. Hopefully you guys could see that down on the target cam. Uh, there was another question about yucca limbs and if I like them. Um, yeah, they're a great limb. Um, I don't know. I'm up in the air. I feel like it kind of has to get paired with the yucca bow. Could just be me. Um, then again, I think they would be probably amazing uh, for... Uh, bare bow and stuff like that because I I like the fact for the for the bare bow once you got you know back to full draw that they kind of come you can just kind of sit back there a little bit more they kind of have like a like a pocket where it's just nice and and easy to just hold which could be good for uh, you know bare bow shooters I don't I don't do a lot of bare bow so can't say too much there for Olympic recurve I think it's it's they're great as well. Uh, don't get me wrong, but I'm really used to just the the feel of uh, the less recurved uh, limbs. But no, yucca is definitely an excellent limb, and I think it's pretty amazing what they do with carbon because, I don't know, at this point I don't think anybody else has been able to really uh, keep pace with them with how much carbon they use in their bows and limbs. Pretty sure they have 100% carbon limbs uh, besides, you know, this the bushings that have to be made out of metal. Um, I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure they're 100% carbon limbs besides the bushings, which is pretty wild <laughs> if you think about it. All right, so end number two now, and uh, let's see what we can do. Excuse me.
right. Kind of squeaked that one out. That was... That was all right. Moving a little bit. <laughs> Definitely would have helped them practice more at 18. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that was in number two. Unofficially, it might be like a 27. We well, got to see. I got one that's pretty close to the line over there. Uh, we'll check it out, though. Not going too bad. I really do want to keep like 27 up. That would be pretty awesome. Um, so uh, let's go down, check them out after I get a drink here. Hopefully everybody's enjoying the stream. Uh, if it actually works really well, we might do this a lot more often. I've had problems in the past with uh, my internet connection here. So this time, after not live streaming for many months, we finally hardwired everything. All the cameras are hardwired. So this may solve the problems, besides the fact that the internet here is pretty poor because I live in the middle of the woods. Um, <laughs> we could use better internet. <laughs> All right, so we finished N2. Uh, that was a 27. No one, the one was an eight, <laughs> but I got a 10, so that was that was that was helpful. That was that was productive. Um, so we're gonna be going into N3 here. Uh, we had two questions. Somebody said something about a nose button. I saw that because Brady's been uh, been using a nose button. Uh, so that might be something I might just play around with to see how that goes. Um, I have a bad habit still. I, I still kind of lean a little bit in my shot. Still working on it, but it's a very old, very ingrained habit um, that I'm still working on. We're making progress, though, because scores keep improving, so, you know. <laughs> Maybe I'm just getting better at leaning, but um, uh, we, we're still working on that. I may try the nose button, though, to see if that helps smooth some things out, because it is me going back from the string. Um... Well, let's see. What was the second question, Judy? How long is your bow? Oh, how long is my bow? Uh, this is a 25-inch riser with long limbs, so that should make it a 70-inch uh, bow. I think the formula does make it kind of deceiving because... Limb pockets, they're, they're so big. It always, you know, I don't know. It, it still is like, is that a 27? No. 25. All right. And number three. All right, that was that was much better. Not exactly sure what the score is, but that was a much better shot than basically any of the last six I shot. So much happier there. Ugh. Sorry, excuse me. 
I had lunch before this. It was probably a slight mistake, but there's only one thing that's really bad in archery, and that's shooting air archery for score and being hungry at the same time. <laughs> so I decided I should eat lunch before this, and now, uh, now, now I got some burps going on that were that were unintended. <laughs> Boom. Still a little high. Nope. It's coming off my face. Okay, not, not next to the other ones, but I think we got a nine out of it. <laughs> uh, it's coming along. We're, we're, we're getting there. We're, we're, we're easing in. You know, took more ends than I, I want, but uh, the first two were, were pretty stellar. Uh, all right. Get that. Another drink. If you haven't watched already, I put up a video on the shooting shack here that I'm standing in. We made some upgrades to it. So if you want to check that out and see the little building that's not a building, it's a temporary structure that I'm shooting in, uh, then you can check that out. Maybe it's something you want to build at home or convince your <laughs> local range to build if they happen to be shooting in a field. Pretty cool. I got a little heater in here. Even though it's actually 65 degrees right now. Um, I'll, I'll get back to you on that in Celsius. Everybody having a good time? Yeah. How many people are watching this? Uh, we have like nine. Okay, made it back. That was a 29, so that was pretty great. Um, 18 degrees Celsius, by the way, for everybody else in the world besides the United States. But it's, yeah, it's pretty toasty, even though I'm still wearing pants, but no heater on. I got the door open. Pretty sweet. Shooting with the sounds of the birds. Tweeting. Um, all right, so N3 down. That was a 29. That was good. I think we ended with a, an 88. 84. 84, 84. Um, now we're going to start uh, at number four. We're just going to do this. All right. 
See, that's what we want to do. Sometimes we don't do that when we have arrows in the bow. I gotta get it, gotta get it flowing here. No, holding up the show. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Do it one with that. Eighteen meters is so low compared to seventy. <laughs> Literally, feel like I'm pointing at the ground. Oh. Boom! All right, that might actually be pretty sweet. That might be. That might be. That might be a thirty. But. Shh. We'll find out together. Even though you guys know before me, you're actually cheaters. You're cheating. You got a camera down there. I just got two somewhat all right eyes. If it weren't for these contacts, they would be considered lousy. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I am going to find out now what I actually shot. I think it was a 30. They all felt pretty good. All right, so um, before we head down, though, um, Dr. Judy is behind the computer here. She's the producer on this live stream. Me, I am just the entertainment. But if you have any questions, though, uh, you know, leave your questions, comment. Uh, she will go through them, and she will let me know what you have to say, and I'll uh, do my best to answer them. So, um, got any questions? Put her to work. <laughs> We shot a 30. 30 on N4, that was pretty sweet. All right, that, I, that's exciting. Sometimes it doesn't happen for the whole tournament. Um, so, awesome. All right, so now we have to go and focus on our next end, because now that one is, it is behind us. We must, we must focus and we must continue on because we have arrows to shoot in the center of that target. And number five, five? I'm being told five. I lose track at some point. It's, it's the public school education. All right. That worked pretty good before. We're just going to do one of these. At some point in time, 
once I train enough, maybe I won't have to do any of those. But the body, I don't know. It's, it's getting sloppy and it's, it's grand old age here. Uh, <laughs> it seems to forget. <laughs> Felt good. I moved a lot on that one. That, that one I uh, that was I was cashing in on the arrow bank on that one. Pretty sure uh, I don't know if Crispin Duenas uh, created that term or not. One of the one of the top shooters in Canada, but um, yeah, I, I forget exactly how he explained it. But basically, the arrow bank is you you build up an arrow bank from practicing a lot. And then when you make a shot like that, that my number two shot, and it's questionable, but it somehow still goes kind of where you want it, that's when you're cashing in, uh, you know, some of your arrow bank points. <laughs> so I don't know if he created that 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 phrase, but uh, I'll give him the credit for it, unless some other contender wants to step into the ring. That was also kind of sloppy, but I think I captured the 10 on that top shot. All right, that went pretty good again. Uh, I don't know, from my perspective, it looks like it's a, I don't know, 28 or 29, might be higher than that. Uh, two of the three weren't, in my opinion, the most lovely shots. Uh, I like shooting nice shots, kind of regardless of excuse me, where they go on the target. I just like shooting nice shots. Uh, take a drink here and we'll uh, check it out. Any any questions? Yes. Uh, you have a high draw, a very high draw of right hand. Have you had a shoulder injury because of that? Uh, no, I have not had a shoulder injury from a high draw. Um, <laughs> some of it, I, I, I want to say um, uh, without, no, 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 no naming of anybody, but, uh, I, at one point in time, I had an archery coach when I was quite young and they, uh, they really forced me to have like a high draw and a very high elbow. Like they like forced me. So, um, yeah, tough time. I made it through, but, um, that's something that I haven't been able to, haven't been able to correct because I think I've just built up everything else around it. Uh, it, it works, it works, and my, my current coach, um, you know, doesn't really have an issue with it as long as it's not causing you problems. Um, the only thing I think it may cause a disadvantage of, if you get too high, I think sometimes having a nice clean release back, um, it doesn't help with, alignment-wise, I'm actually pretty good, um... Other than that, I don't know. It may be something that smooths out uh, later on. I see, it's funny because I feel like I feel less of an effect at 70 than I do at 18. Don't know why, but that just seems how it, you know, it seems to work out that way. Um, maybe it's just me and my perspective. But, uh, you know, as the person actually shooting, I feel like the, the high elbow has a greater effect at the shorter distance than it does at the long distance. And you can kind of relate that in a, in a way because there's been some world famous archers with really high elbows and stuff, and they've gone to like the Olympic Games and won medals and things like that. You know, it's it's not the commonplace, but it does happen. So I feel like maybe it is something that's more uh, dramatic at 
18. I don't know. Let's go check out and see what, uh, what I actually shot. <laughs> Hmm. We're back, and that was a 29. Felt kind of kind of lucky on two of them, but uh, all right, I'll take it. 29. Um, we had a question about comparing the Formula Xi and the Formula. Oh no, oh, sorry. Yeah, the Exceed and the Formula Xi. Um, they're both really good. I think if you want a lot of availability and limb options, for some reason, if you didn't want the Hoyts, um, the, the XC is going to give you more of that. Also, I believe they're making it in a 27-inch now. So for barebow shooters or very tall people, like my brother, you know, he's like 6'3", 6'4". Now, I'm the short one of the family at, at like 6 foot. Um, <laughs> uh, that's great for, for somebody like that or somebody that wants to shoot barebow. I know they like larger bows. Um, it works better for how uh, they go about shooting barebow. I think that's a great option. I wouldn't... They're definitely separate. And yes, they are the same. They're bows. But um, I, I think the formula is probably the better target bow. Unless you're somebody that really likes ILFs. And there's nothing wrong with that. I've shot ILFs for years. But I've been really happy with how this formula... Uh, XI has been shooting. I like the uh, string tension adjustments. I they, I notice a difference on the XI with them. Uh, not so much on the Xceed. I have to do a put up a testing video um, about that. But uh, for the two, I think if you're somebody that's already shooting ILFs, go with the Xceed. You can't go wrong. Um, or if you want to be adventurous, you've never shot Formula before, or you already have a Hoyt Formula bow then I think uh, the XI is definitely uh, the best one that I have shot out of all of them. And I think it's worth upgrading to, or if you want to try it out for the first time, you just want to you know, put a lot of money down for new limbs and a new riser, and you want it formula from Hoyt, then I would definitely go uh, with the XI at this point. Because um, I've shot a lot of the formulas in the past, and some of them were really good. Like the RX was a, a really good riser, and they had a, a you know one or two... Uh, since then, but this one really stands out, I think. And I know some people are going to say that it's not much different than, uh, you know, the, the previous one. All they added was the string tension adjustments. But I think that really makes a, a difference in how the bow performs. I think it shot a lot better. It's funny though, because I think, <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think Brady threw down his his best scores with the other one. Um, but, but then again, it's, it's been a weird year this year, so not, 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 not hating on Brady. He does a, he does a great job, but it's also been a strange shooting year this year. Um, hopefully that answers your question. I, I will try to make videos to explain that better. And a little bit of a tough, tough spot right now. Uh, my main computer that edits everything is currently not working. Uh, so I am in the process of trying to get parts to fix it. And um, that's that's taking a, 
a bit of a bit of time. So we'll get back to that. We got some videos rolling out, but the in-depth ones where I have to do a lot of, of editing and stuff and you know putting in graphics and things, it's a really a pain to do it on an edit on a computer that does not that it is not designed for editing. Um, so with that, we're on to end number five, six. Number six, we're just rolling through this tournament here. Um, by the way, anybody from World Archery happens to be watching my little stream here, thank you for doing this. This is really fun. I personally can't afford to fly to... I think this was going to be Luxembourg, if I, if I have it correctly. I could be wrong, but uh, I can't afford to fly there at this point in time, nor am I probably allowed to go there without quarantining for at least two weeks. If I'm allowed to fly there at all, I don't know if they've done, they've reinstated like no fly things. So uh, with everything that's going on, I'm really glad World Archery put this together. So big thank you to them. Uh, I, I appreciate it as, as an archer. Oh. I'm gonna take off the tip protector. Otherwise the boat feels like it's a hundred pounds. <laughs> low on that one. It's kind of, oh, funky shot. <laughs> Alright. I'm going to go down and pick them up. I think it's like a 28. Looks like I shot, last two arrows look like they're 9s. I think the first one's a 10. Um, a little hard to see. Looks like it could be a 10. Well, people really appreciate it. Yeah. 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 And they're saying thanks for all the answers. Um, so the NTS, and then there's another question about what percentage force do you think you use in each finger of the draw hand? Greetings from the Netherlands. Okay. So NTS is first. All right. Made it back. It, w it was a 27. I, th I, I thought the first one was a little better. It definitely shot better, so I would have taken three shots that were nines that were good, like, that felt like that one. But, um, yeah, last two. 
kind of got lucky on again, I feel like. So 27 for that. Uh, we have two questions. One's about NTS and have I shot it? I can't say I officially have because I haven't gone to an official NTS coach. Um, my current coach um, uh, that runs SW Archery, Sung Woo Shin, um, he does a uh, like a hybrid between the two since he was trained in Korea and he went to, uh, from my understanding, he went through like all the archery, like archery university, shot college archery. And, and all that, and he's um, he's friends with a lot of the, the top Koreans, so he actually does like a hybrid between the two, and that's actually worked really well for me personally, because I actually went and saw um, uh, Coach Kim, um, you know, uh, the guy that wrote the uh, the whole book and everything on archery that, you know, Coach Lee ended up writing his own uh, later on. Anyway, I actually went and saw him, uh, did a whole shoot with him, for uh, several days up in Montreal at one point, and I did. I was doing a lot of like very linear shooting, and it works. And it's definitely not a bad way to shoot, but for certain things, I was still having a really hard time with. Um, and previously, I had tried some kind of like NTS stuff on my own, and there was some things that I was having a really hard time with. So conveniently, uh, my my coach happens to do kind of like a hybrid of both because he's been trained in Korea because he was an archer in Korea and then he came to the U.S. and he, you know, worked with some of the top coaches in here, you know, in the U.S. that were doing NTS stuff and he saw aspects of, of each that were, that he felt were kind of superior, you know, to one another and he's kind of applied both together and he's gotten some really great results. Um, I think he currently has... Uh, an archer that's sitting in uh, Jun Sono. It currently sits, I think, he's in the top eight. I, I want to say he might be three, but don't don't quote me on that. He actually just took, I think it was second place at uh, Gator Cup this year, just a couple weeks ago. So really phenomenal shooter. So he's had some good results, and I personally am just happy with my shooting. At the end of the day, that is what matters, not really the form you shoot. As long as you're happy with your shooting, you're feeling good, you're not hurting yourself, because you don't want to get results and be in pain every single time either. At least to me, that doesn't make any sense. So if I you know, never get to the point where I'm shooting unbelievable scores, but I'm always feeling good, like I'm feeling good now, and I'm having a good time, that's all that matters to me because now I'm enjoying archery. You know, you don't want to make it, you know, you don't want to turn it into a suffering. What, what, what's, what's the point? I'm, I'm here to have fun. Um, uh, the second question was um, How much percentage force do you think you use on each finger of the draw hand from the Netherlands? Ooh, okay. This is probably where it goes a little more uh, NTS in a way with percentage force uh, per finger. Um, I am pretty heavy on the top finger and the bottom two kind of just hang out there and they just kind of kind of flop off of it because I could I could easily draw back my bow even with my take off the tip protector I could easily draw this back with with one finger so <laughs> it's probably it's probably like 85 90 percent this top one and then the rest is separated between this between the two. Now, I have tried putting most of the force on the middle finger here, and I had, you know, fine results, but for me, again, my best shooting has come from moving most of the weight to this top finger. Uh, for some reason, it just lets, again, for me, lets the string just clear uh, the fingers, and it actually helped my release because then this finger is supposed to drag the neck. I know, I don't do it all the time. I'm a work in progress. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so probably like 85, 90, and then the rest, the other two are the, the remaining. <laughs> Hope that helped you out. Uh, also, uh, nice meeting you, and there's some awesome archers from uh, the Netherlands. I, I, I really miss shooting with some of those guys. You know, I'm, I'm hoping Vegas, really, you know, I can't, Look, look, I got my fingers crossed. I'm really hoping the Vegas shoot does not get canceled because it'd be really fun 
to see all of my people from all over the world. I, I don't even get to see the Canadians anymore, and they're just, they're like, well, they're like a couple hundred miles that way. And I don't even get to see them anymore, so it'll be great if Vegas is actually open and a lot of archers come and show up. Of course, that is, you know, permitting on what's going on uh, in the world, and I, you know, I understand that, but I can be hopeful that it will improve. Now, let's get on to shooting at number seven. Yeah. Seven. Look at that. Almost higher than I can count. Alright, eh, well, last one wasn't as great. The first two though, yeah, we were putting some work in on those. I don't know if they're both 10s, but you know what, in my heart, they felt like 10s. So I guess the target was just in the wrong spot. <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll check that out. I'm sure you guys already see the answer. Um, from here though, I'm calling 28. It could be a 27. I don't think it's lower than that. So it's almost not below a 27. Hey, we're doing good. Mm -hmm. we oh, we got some questions. All right. Um, Hit me up, Dr. Judy. About the Velos lens. There's some damage of polish on the pivot point on them. Do you have that small problem too? The pivot point. I don't think I don't think I have damage on the on the pivot point. Uh the I I do <laughs> I do have some near the limb tip and um that was because I tried to string it with too small of a string. <laughs> but um because I, I make custom strings for each bow to to try to get um a certain base brace height and I put one on that was too small and you could you can see some um uh, some up here but in this section now it looks it looks great to me. Um I have not had not had any any issues. Um uh, even on the inside and stuff where um it clicks into the limb uh, that all those spots have been really great too. I'm, I'm actually surprised because some of my older Hoyt limbs, they, they basically look like they were kind of delaminating so do you, in do a you way. Meant on the contact point with the riser. Oh, contact point with the riser. Okay, no, mine has been mine has been great. Yeah. Um. I don't know if you can. You can't really. Probably can't see in the camera there, but um. No, I, I, they've, been, they've been fine to me. I'll, I'll have to, uh, to take them apart. I could take them apart and show you um, after, after we're done shooting. Uh, you only got a couple lens left. And uh, we can see what, they, uh, see what they look like. You know, maybe I am wrong, but I, I don't think I've had an issue. Now, some of the past ones, definitely. Um, <laughs> like, I had, um, I think it was something like 990TXs. Like, you could, you could like, peel off some of the the layers it was it was not not cool um but then again i have some old limbs like i have a pair of i had a pair of uh, m1s hoyt m1s and a point of hoyt epics and they didn't have any problems they were they were hardcore man they you could <laughs> i used and abused those puppies and they held up um the velos seem to be back on track with that they just seem to be just obviously better performing it you know it is 15 years or so since epics and m1s have been been made maybe even longer it might be almost on 20 years now <laughs> more questions yes um not sure uh what are the main differences for you between competing from home and going to a competition and which do you prefer this competing from home okay so the, competing from home versus going to a competition competing from home is weird like this end's gone pretty good and i've had a few but to be honest I've been like, not, I don't know if I quite say nervous, but it's weird to turn this into 
a competition setting with all the cameras going and stuff like that. I do score from home, so you think it wouldn't be a, an issue, but it definitely feels like its own, it's its own thing that's different from going to an actual tournament. Because when I go to a tournament, like, I am physically packing everything up, and I'm moving on in, and I'm like in that tournament mindset for the whole weekend. This is really strange because I'm here, but like my house is, is literally right over there. And there's like all these other things that I'm used to doing when I'm not shooting. There's, there's more distractions, I guess, that, that would be the, the way to put it. Where when I go to a tournament, all I have to focus on is archery. And I can just literally just be consumed by it. Like I can just jump in a pool of archery and I could just be in it. But here at home, yes, I have the range right out back, but I'm constantly like getting in it, getting out of it because I got something else to do. You know, I'm, I'm putting on a lot of different hats, I guess you could use that analogy. When I'm at a tournament away, I just put on one hat and I leave it on all weekend. So hopefully that answered your question. I'm going to go and pick these up and um, leave some more questions. Dr. Judy's behind the computer. Uh, she's our producer and she's going to be uh, feeding me questions in between ends. So let's let's get these counted though. All right? Yeah, just one more. How many people? Uh, we got the old one. Ooh, 30. That's good. Have you ever used an axle sight? back 29 yep. I'm pretty sure yep. yeah I know I just I just put it into my phone and I forgot um, there was a question about how I use an Excel site and yet well a site pin I have used uh, their actual sites no they are very nice um, I just haven't gotten around to buying one um, I've used this Shibuya for forever. Uh, the only bad thing at this point, and it is a very old site. Um, I bought this in like 2011. Uh, <laughs> we got some wiggling going on, um, but it, it works. Yes, I'll, I'll probably buy one at some point. Um, either Excel or I might buy the new, um, this new like pro Shibuya model. Um, is that the... Uh, the new Ultima, Ultima 2. Sorry, sorry, Shibuya. I forgot what your new site was called. Uh, but that one looks pretty sweet. I might pick up that one. Who knows, though? It, 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 it's up in the air. But I am using um, the Chef uh, site pin, and I think it's pretty fantastic. I've had a great experience with it. Uh, for years, I used the Shibuya site pin, and uh, after switching, I found that I must have been kind of a little, a little over aiming all these years because the Shibuya pin's so small, all you see is the gold. So I was like hyper focused on like, on like the gold, <laughs> probably like over stressing myself out. And um, this one by Trueball on Excel with, with Chef, um, the uh, R, 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 RCF, R, R, yeah, I probably got it wrong. Um, this pin, Great. I feel like I do less of that. Uh, it really works good at 70 meters. It's a little probably big for 18, but I make it work because this is my 
This is really just a an outdoor setup bow that I'm shooting at 18 meters. So let's begin with end number eight, okay. seven. Okay. No, eight. no, eight. We're on eight. Look at that. I got it right. We're using uh, some snazzy short shot archery points here, by the way, on uh, an Easton X10 410 shaft, uh, Easton pins, Easton pin knocks. And currently I have some uh, Brady veins on. I am working on testing out some uh, X wings. I might save that for the summer because everybody's going to be shooting indoors. I have, a, I have a lot of veins to test, um, but just wanted to give people an update on that. You can check out uh, the Shore Shot Archery points at shoreshotarchery.org. Uh, you can get onto the, the wait list because they're currently back ordered. <laughs> but uh, we're, we're working on that, we're working on our supply side. Low, low, real low. Might have been an eight. All right, I think we made it work with that last one. That one's hard to see. I don't know where that one went. <laughs> Hopefully in the center. Second to last one was low. That was like an eight nine liner. Uh, we'll have to go down and check that out. We got, ooh, we got some questions though. I'm told we have questions. Do you think a heavier bow with heavier draw weight shoots better than a lower poundage bow? Ooh, heavier bow with, with heavier draw weight. Does that shoot better than a lower poundage bow? Does that shoot better than a lower poundage bow? I think if you take out the human element, if you have a machine shooting it, yes, the heavier weight, higher poundage bow will shoot better. But I think a lot of it's going to come down to what you can handle and what you can handle with maintaining good form. Because I personally have shot like 53 pound bows before and currently I'm at 46 and I am out shooting the scores that I shot with a 53 pound bow. And you can kind of see those results with, uh, well, I guess, I guess namely like the, the Korean archers uh, in the women's division, I'm pretty sure a lot of them shoot on the lower weight side, but they shoot amazing scores. Now, could they shoot even better scores with more weight? Possibly, but does that break down their form? You know, that I, I, I think that's what it comes comes down to, is how much weight can you shoot based on, and, and how that relates to how well you can maintain your form consistently. Because you could shoot like three good shots uh, and have great form with a heavy bow, but can you do it for all six shots? And then can you do that with six shots spread across, you know, all the all all twelve ends for outdoors? I, I think uh, that's the key. I think if, if archery went down to like thirty six arrows instead of seventy two outdoors, then I think there would be an advantage maybe for the people to shoot heavier bows. I know World Cups they shoot pretty heavy bows. You know, the men's divisions, I think like. 48 pounds is the average or something like that. Uh, there's a bunch of guys shooting in the 50s. But I don't know. I, I, to, to me, it, it doesn't quite make sense. As that's the only solution. I really think it's how it relates to your form 
end to you because if you can't handle the weight it makes no sense shooting more because it, it shouldn't help your score and it shouldn't help your accuracy and consistency because you're not maintaining the form hopefully that makes sense um it makes sense for me and i i've kind of experienced that myself of course it's been over the years but uh, <laughs> i've tried some really dumb things do you like more bamboo core limbs or foam core? Ooh, bamboo or foam core? I'm gonna throw a curveball. I like maple core limbs. <laughs> um, that's 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 definitely the key. Um, foam core is not bad, but I ha I ha honestly have not shot them in in years now. Uh, well, actually, the win and win limbs, uh, the NS uh, NSGs technically were like a foam core. I, I, I take that back. Um, I, I usually like the feel, honestly, of of the maple and, at this point, the bamboo, because these are bamboo, uh, these veloses here. I, I like that better than uh, the foam. I like that little bit snappier, um, you know, release when you get to full draw. It, it like, really reacts better. Um, the foam, I, I, I haven't, I haven't shot a foam core limb where I feel that reaction as, it's not as defined as the maple or the bamboo. And I think the maple, the reaction of them, you know, snapping back is a lot, is, is still more defined than the bamboo. The bamboo is almost like a bridge between it being maple and it being foam. But, you know, that, that is just my experience, you know, with this one set of of bamboo limbs here and you know the couple sets of well actually probably like a dozen sets of of maple limbs and one set of or two sets of foam i, I technically had a hoyt foam set at one point i think i had foam 990 tx's that was a weird time though <laughs> i had like 48 pound limbs that's when i that's when i was shooting like 53 pounds uh, um but yeah i do like bamboo better than uh, the foam when it when it comes down to it, but I also take maple. <laughs> um, while we're talking about limbs, how does Formula Limbs compare to ILF? All right, Formula Limbs compared to ILF. I really think at this point, because uh, the Formula Limb, I really think has it has matured since it it's you know first coming out. I think it's definitely smoother than uh, an ILF limb. Uh, that being said, though, there are certain brands. Uh, you know, Yuka, uh, MK does a, a, a pretty stellar job too. Uh, those ILF limbs come awfully close. At that point, it's going to be like very personal preferency on the, on the, on the, like the, the rest of it. Like, cause smoothness wise, they're all pretty close. Obviously Yuka's smoother than the two of them. Uh, but you get other characteristics with the Yuka that are different than, uh, the MK and, and the Hoyt, but in terms of just smoothness, um, formula is pretty nice. I'm, I'm quite happy with them, and I feel like they're way better than uh, than they used to be. I think I still have a set of Quattros hanging around uh, that are that are in good shape. I'm gonna have to slap them into this at some point uh, and just feel feel the difference because it has been a few years. But Hoyt, Hoyt really really has put in the put in some time so hopefully they keep up the good work uh with that because i'll be watching and i'll be i'll be letting you guys know if they, they start slipping up on us and i'm really going to look into that um we'll check after we're done shooting i'll look in to see if uh my limbs are are coming apart underneath i haven't noticed anything but since you guys are bringing it up you know maybe that's something new because i have not had a problem but uh let's go and check out the arrows and I'll be right back. There are two other questions about the
So first is, do you feel the bow balanced at full draw so your front shoulder is relaxed? If so, wouldn't the bow arm should drop as part of the follow through? My bow arm should drop. Oh, whoop. Do you feel the bow balanced at full draw so your front shoulder is relaxed? If so, wouldn't the bow arm drop as part of the fall? All right, we're back. That was 28. Yeah. Not too bad. Would like them more in the center, so uh, <laughs> stop playing that game, but uh, that's all right. Um, there was a question about the bow being balanced, my front shoulder being relaxed, and then the bow arm dropping when I shoot. As part of the follow-through. As part of the follow-through. So, drawing back the bow, it feels nice and balanced at full draw. It feels really good here. Uh, but, and I don't always do this right, but my <laughs> bow arm really should stay pretty still through the uh, through the whole shot, and this is really just supposed to like it. It, it really should kind of maintain this height. Like, yes, it's probably going to drop some just just because, but it really shouldn't just like smack into the ground. It's, that's uh, not the best. Um. Wait. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it relaxed, though. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say my bow arm is is relaxed at at full draw. Um, it's just kind of holding there. If the shoulder is relaxed, how does it stay in the same place? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because it's it's it, my shoulder's not relaxed. It's just. But I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not like tightening it up. I'm just. I'm just hold. It just. It just holding if it was relaxed like i wouldn't i wouldn't be able to hold it up at all i, I could be i could be you know understanding this this incorrectly i'm not putting tension into it but i'm also not letting it just hang out there because it it's gotta it's gotta hold all this weight so it's not completely relaxed yeah, yeah. What's a what's a good way? Because if they said if the bow is floating, then the shoulder is relaxed. But if it's relaxed, then how does it stay in the same place? What's what's the best way to? Basically, I I maintain tension in my in my shoulder I just don't uh, I don't apply I keep the I, I, I try to keep the minimal amount to keep it in place but I, I don't try to exert extra tension like I'm not trying to like hold it there as still as possible I just hold it there so yes it's not relaxed but I'm also not I'm not straining to do it I, I'm, I'm probably doing a terrible job uh, explaining this. Do you feel the but, weight of the bow when at full draw? At full draw, it feels light. Okay, so you use your back and last to keep your shoulder in place during the shot? Alright, yeah. Okay. I said food for thought. Um, I'll, I'll, no, I really, I'll, I'll, I'll take your, 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 your things into consideration. I'll, I'll think about it, because I haven't really thought a lot about it. I kind of just do, and I, you know, go with you know what my coach has to say about things cuz you know they they make sense as he's as he's teaching them um but i haven't really thought down to like little the, like the little little parts of it it's just been working well <laughs> um one other question from hungry all right would like to know if your elbow tip is inside the arrow line and does it really help the overall shooting all right elbow tip Inside the arrow line, does it help overall shooting? I think so because then, 
because if because if it's in line, then it's all behind the arrow. But if you're too far in or you're too far out, then you're exerting a an a, a, a odd angle of like force. When you release, you're you're coming off at a at a at a different angle. Because if everything's straight, because you're trying, you're, we're making triangles here. At the end of the day, it, it seems like regardless if you shoot linear or NTS, everybody's in the triangle game. Everybody's trying to make triangles. And the big one up front is that line from the arrow all the way through uh, your elbow, because if you break that. You, you have a, a hard time, you know, drawing back the bow or just maintaining, you know, a consistent position. So you, you definitely want to work on trying to keep that elbow, uh, you know, in line as best as possible. Uh, the big thing, though, because it does differ per person, is really just trying to keep your elbow behind, in line or behind your, uh, your plunger. So if you can see it come out, of, you know, in front of your plunger, then... You're, you're you're too far out and if you're behind your arrow then you're definitely too far in you, you, you kind of just you find your happy spot in there because like i've i've watched brady shoot and i've watched other other archers shoot and everybody has basically the same in a sense but everybody has their own like little little thing but you definitely want it close to being in line with the arrow and back behind the bow not out to the side or out to the other side, which this one's really hard to do. That one, that one hurts, and that's when you get like you start like arching out your whole core and stuff, make a real mess there. I feel like a lot of a lot of newer archers, and even I have have a tendency of sometimes I used to be too far forward where this thing was like sticking out, but um, I've worked on that, and, it, and no, it definitely because you can feel like when you expand, you feel like you can drive those arrows into the target a lot better. So hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> no. <laughs> trying trying my best to, uh, to to answer these, especially during uh, uh, this this World Series here. Hopefully everybody's enjoying. Uh, let's go and shoot this now. We got we got three arrows to shoot. Oh, low, low, low. Oh, what did you think? Nines today it is. Oh, it's not an eight. Uh, I need thicker X10s. I need fatter X10s. Break some lines. Uh, just make better shots, Anthony. There we go. That was definitely a nine. Maybe that one was a ten. We can pull a. A 28, that's either a 28 or a 27. Still a little low. I guess I'll put some clicks on the old site. They make them adjustable and they charge extra for it. For a reason, might as well get my money's worth and adjust the site. Uh-oh. Good thing, uh, good thing we're coming to N10 here. We're, we're starting to run out of water with some Powerade mixed in. Anybody have a favorite drink for archery? I do water and then I get the little packets of Powerade and then I mix them in. Uh, funny enough, Vic Wonderly, yes, Vic Wonderly that took individual silver in Sydney in 2000. Um, yes, he actually told me about that. He loves water and the the power rate packets power rate packets so that's what i've been using for a couple of years now and it's been really great they're also dirt cheap they're like unbelievably cheap i think you get a box of 12 for like two dollars and normally i was buying gatorades and watering them down like 50 percent and it was still like a dollar a gatorade or or so so massive savings and there's actually there's no sugar and 
it's been working pretty great for me. If you guys have recommendations, I'd be interested to see, you know, what people have to say. Uh, you know, what is your drink of choice? We could get some really interesting ones. <laughs> Right, and number nine, ten, nine, eight. <laughs> so we got a 27, which is good because that was kind of our objective. We're trying to stay 27 and up. I uh, think we've been pretty good on that so far. We got one more end left though. This is end number 10. Um, I have to shoot the second part of it. I guess we're going to do, we'll probably do that tomorrow. I took two days off from work so that I can shoot this tournament and share it with you guys. Um, so hopefully you're enjoying. I wonder, um, you know, you'll have to let me know. I'll look around too. But I'm kind of curious if anybody else is live streaming their World Indoor Series shoot. Hopefully I'm not the only one. Uh, it would be really fun if other archers are doing it, especially around the globe. Uh, because, I don't know, why not? Got to share some archery. You know, it, it is what it is. Um, and besides, I like I spend time with my, my archery people. <laughs> All right. We got that. Number 10. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, I feel like my release is like, yeah. We'll shape this. We'll try to shape this up for uh, the one last arrow. Being sloppy, so sloppy. There we go. That was better. I don't, I don't know if it's a ten, but it was at least better. So, Mr. V. Lauren uses whey protein for jerking because it helps him force archery muscles. All right. Very cool, your whey protein. It's good stuff. My brother actually does uh, weightlifting. He's, he's, he's big into that. Um, so he's he, he knows the way, you would say. Uh, <laughs> um, and also they want to know what your job is besides short shot archery. All right, so my job besides short shot archery and making sure Dr. Judy over there has everything taken care of for her, her doctor ring. Um, <laughs> I actually work at a CVS pharmacy. I manage, I'm a manager. Um, I do that, then do all the short shot stuff. And yeah, it's, it's about, it's, it's enough. It's, 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 it's plenty. I would love the archery to be a full-time thing. Uh, probably not the shooting part of it, even though that would be really cool. 
But uh, I got a lot of irons in the fire. So between the videos and the products, hopefully at some point it'll it'll uh, it'll become its own thing entirely. But for now, yeah, I am at CVS. <laughs> If you compare the Yuka extra smooth lens with the Velos, why do you prefer the Velos? Ooh, extra smooth. Not, I'm, I forget if I shot the 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 Yuka extra smooth, but okay. So the the Yukas are definitely smoother than the Velos, but. It comes back to the other aspects of it for me. I I like the limbs. Like uh, the yukas are snappy too, but when I get the full draw on the yukas and I'm just like really sitting back there, like for me, I, I felt like I would lose back tension because it was just so easy, like all of a sudden. Like you, you in a way you felt like you were kind of pulling back a compound bow, and you, you know, you, you you came over that 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 hill there, and it was just like, oh, we can just we can just sit back there, and I just I don't know, I, I found myself just kind of hanging back at full draw more. It's like Anthony, what are you doing? You're supposed to be shooting, you're supposed to be shooting arrows here. It's not hold the bow back all day, so. Uh, that that was that was probably the the one big thing for me and. Maybe maybe I'm just inclined to do that. Maybe it has to do with my form. They're definitely not bad limbs, but that's why I like uh, the Velos more. That's how I like like the MK ones or even the Win and Win ones more. Just that you know, yeah, all right, feel good at full draw, boom. Instead of oh yeah, this is sweet and just like oh, just like sit there all day. <laughs> so they said you like the slack. <laughs> Stack. That's slack. I'm sorry. Yeah, I like I like the stack. I was like slack. Huh? Sorry. <laughs> oh no, doctor can't read. <laughs> uh, yes, I like I I like I like like the stack, but I, I don't like when the stack just like ramps up like instantly because I from from some of the like the information I have on short shot archery still with with how the limbs go, they're they're they're. There's a point, it seems like, at each one where as it's building up, you know, the weight, you know, per every, you know, half inch you draw back, as it's building up, it levels out a, a little bit in, in some sections. When you start getting around like that, that 28, 29-ish draw length, and I like that just for that little part because then like you know you're, you're in your back and boom. I just don't... <clears throat> yeah, excuse me. I I feel like the yucca limbs just smooth out too much, and I just feel like I'm just sitting back there in a hole. I don't know. It, it, it's probably a major personal preference thing at that point because they're still an incredible set of limbs, uh, the yuccas. Um, what did you? Uh, how do you find slash tell your elbow tip is inclined? Does it have a special feeling, and which angle is best to tell? Um, how do you tell if your elbow's inclined like it's going up? I personally end up, if my elbow goes too high, I lose the ability to have really good back tension. And, um, especially at 70, when things are going really well, I feel, uh, when I'm, when I'm shooting, I can, I feel like I'm controlling the whole bow with just this portion of my, like I'm shooting the whole shot just with that portion of my body and if my elbow's too high I don't get that feeling of of control and I will have to say like during this whole time shooting there was a few shots that were basically most of the tens that I felt like I was really in control and there was a lot of other ones most of the ones I was saying like I felt like I was getting lucky that I didn't feel like I was in that much control of the shot and Honestly, that's probably my fault for just going from 70 to 18 and practicing 18 for like a day or so. So it's definitely a thing. You, you got to play around with it. Don't hurt yourself, obviously. Uh, you know, 
you know, be careful with it. You definitely don't want to do anything crazy where you have like your elbow going down. I don't, I don't know if that's productive for anyone. Um, say on a horizontal axis, left to right relative to, to the arrow line, that full draw actually. Left to right. Oh. I, f I feel like the best way to figure that out then would be to take your bow or even without a bow if you got the target in front of you and you go like this maybe have somebody like take a picture or you could even like have a, a piece of string from here to here and if it lays across your hand and then it, you know you're holding it in this hand and it's all in line then you're probably good to go if you get up to full, if you, if you, if you get, if you grab your bow and you bring your bow up and suddenly you're like this and your piece of string is making its own triangle, then it's like, oh, you're not straight. Because I personally figured it out. Well, my coach helped me figure it out because, again, I was, I was doing something like, like this. I was very compacted. Um... We figured it out kind of kind of that way, and it was a matter of like, oh look, Anthony, I was like, oh look, wow, I have I have a I have a back, I have I have some structure, okay, and then from there it was a matter of just kind of building on that. Um, the funny thing is, because my my straightening out of my shot, even though it's not you know perfect, and I I still move some, I can feel the improvement in my core strength without doing core exercises. I, I could feel a difference just making sure that I was in line. I could feel a difference not only in my shot, but after I got done shooting, I actually felt like I did some work on my core and stuff, especially when I like woke up the next day. Nothing like extremely, you know, bad not it didn't feel like I just did ab workouts all day but I could actually feel a difference and I felt stronger in my whole whole midsection uh from having you know a proper alignment so it, it's it's definitely there um you, you probably do want somebody else to like watch you and then maybe like take a picture you could try to do that string thing and see how it lines up uh, it's probably a two-person job uh, or a mirror. Mirrors help too. Mirrors and cameras. It's pretty, both very great inventions. Really helping out archers, especially if you don't have people to watch you. Uh, hopefully that answers your question and helps you out. Uh, what are your thoughts on grips? Which do you prefer more? Oh, grips. I've had an interesting experience with grips. And um, I really appreciate all the aftermarket manufacturers. Just want to put that out there. Um, I know, like Jaeger grips. They do an awesome job. Uh, the interesting thing for me is and that I that I've learned is for this bow. Um, this is the stock grip on it. I didn't do anything to the grip. Um, at one point, I did purchase an aftermarket grip, and it was actually, ironically, it was the Jun Sun O, oh, my 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 coach's like top student. He has his own grip, so I got that one because I was like, hey, you know, he uses it. Coach recommends it. We're gonna try it out. Uh, it works great for him. Believe me, he's like top five or three in the in the top three. All right, top three in the country. So I'm like, maybe it'll be better for me. And the funny thing is, is it was when there was no wind, but I brought it to a tournament. And no lie, I shot the first half of the tournament, and I'm like, I'm just blowing in the wind like crazy. For some reason, just that grip fit in my hand, in particular, did not work. I switched grips halfway through the tournament. My scores every end went up five points. So it was definitely the grip. I went from not being able to really like... At that tournament, I had to aim off. I couldn't aim in the center of the target. There was too much wind. For that aftermarket grip, I just couldn't aim off properly. And then when I got to the tournament... Yeah, and, and when I was at the tournament, I couldn't aim off properly. I was like, I have to do something. So I switched back to the stock grip, and all of a sudden, boom, could aim off. 
I could I could feel I was losing the feeling of the wind affecting me and the bow, and I I, I couldn't properly like I guess brace in a, in a, in a sense. I couldn't properly control my body to pick where I wanted to aim to shoot my shot. And by switching, it definitely went up. I'm not saying aftermarket grips are bad, but for that instance, for me, it was actually a, an, an issue. And I think if you go for an aftermarket grip, definitely try it out. And if you're a, an archer that goes to like you know more expensive tournaments like USATs, where you're paying $150 plus, and then you're paying like airline fees and stuff, test out your grip at a local tournament where you're not spending a lot of money first. And make sure that it's going to do its thing. And don't be me where you're shooting half a tournament and you're like, why am I shooting so bad? And then you switch the grip and you get all your, you, the, the next half you get all your points back and you're shooting great again. So um, all, all personal preference stuff, but you, you definitely like keep these things in mind. Every little thing you change on your bow may feel great in practice, but it has an effect. There's like practice set up for your bow and there's tournaments set up for your bow and it's a matter of finding well you want one that shoots well in a tournament you want your bow to shoot well in the tournaments but it, so you got you got to find that middle ground because it, it, somehow the a, a, a tournament is its own like kind of adventure its own little monster and you got to you got to figure out how you have to set yourself up to succeed you did a review of the KSI Jet 6 veins. Uh -huh. Are you going to review the Jet 6 Shark also? They look really nice for 18 indoors. Ah, I do have some Jet 6 Shark veins. Um, I didn't know if people really wanted to see them on <laughs> on X10s, honestly, because I, I really just have X10s. Like, I have some other slightly thicker arrows but they're all basically outdoor arrows so i can i can put them on some x10s and and see how it goes um they're pretty cool looking veins i because it's 18 the size is nice i think the you know their design with the you know the fluid dynamics and everything i don't know if that really does anything at all when you're shooting 18 meters i did notice you know, slight, slight improvements at long range with their smaller ones, but I, 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 I can, I can, I can get around to doing that. Uh, especially once I get that computer fixed up there, <laughs> believe me, it really, really sucks. It takes like a whole day or more to, to do a video. I have to play everything like frame by frame. It's like watching PowerPoints. <laughs> um, what do you recommend for keeping my left shoulder down while shooting? I would to keep your left shoulder down while shooting. I think that's a matter of of practicing just thinking about keeping it keeping it down and you you probably want to start honestly with with without a without a bow. Um because maybe it maybe it, it could be the the weight of the bow. I know for me, I took some weight off my stabilizers even though there's you know, in some people's opinions, there's no weight on them at all to start with, but I took some weight off and I noticed that helped out my shoulder because I had so much weight. Um, as I went into shooting, I would slowly arch my shoulder up in order to, to try to, to brace the weight better. And that wasn't helping my form because it was jamming everything up. So I, I, I did remove some weight. Um, but you could practice just uh, with, without your bow, you know, just kind of feel like you're setting it there. Um, you could even do it with, um, you could kind of like push on a, on a door in a way more. Yeah. You know, obviously that's more for, for keeping, you know, this in line, but you could do it that way. Um, you could do it. You could pull back your bow without an arrow and work on it that way. It's it, a lot of, it's probably a strength thing. And then actively just paying attention to it just making sure that it's down and then at some point you can forget about it because your body is just going to actively subconsciously take care of that for you but you kind of have to like drill drill it in uh 
to it to be like, oh, this is the position I want, and then just keep doing that, and then eventually it just becomes second nature, and you don't have to think about it. Um, that's that, 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 that would probably be my, my best suggestion um, at, at this point. Cameron says his favorite drink on occasion for shooting is a soda made only in the state I'm from, Kentucky, called Ale 8. It's a ginger ale. There you go. All right. I'll have to stop by Kentucky. <laughs> so Very cool. Very cool. Um, let me score those arrows down there. I'm going to get a string or two because somebody asked about uh, what my limbs look like under the bolts. And now I'm curious because, honestly, once I set my bow up, I don't de-string it. <laughs> but I shoot it every day, though. So I don't I don't de-string the bow um, unless I go to a tournament. So... Let's score those, get this wrapped up for World Archery. I'll be back with a stringer, we'll detach the bow, and then uh, we'll go from there. All right? Um, we got everything here. Let's check this out. Well, we have to do this first. Get more No, I guess I guess because they have that. So I'd like to go back. All right, so we wrapped up with a well that was a 29 on N10. We wrapped up with a 283. We did not shoot under a 27, which was really cool. Um 16 10s, 11 9s. Few too many eights. We won't talk about those. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm at the scorecard now. Uh, guys, can I don't know if I don't know if it'll it'll focus on that, but there you go. Um, we're gonna go back, I guess.
All right. Um, Got to figure out how I submit this. <laughs> Oh, I'll figure it out. Well, we got some questions. Um, which Veritune plate is on your bow, and why did why did you choose it on your right plate? Veritune, I have the middle one. One because I'm shooting s small arrows, and two, I asked Brady, Crispin, and Jack, and <laughs> oh. And uh, a whole bunch of them. And they all shoot the same one. So I was like, well, I am not going to buck that trend. Because uh, <laughs> they all outshoot me. So they have to be uh, in the right direction for some reason, you know. <laughs> so I personally would probably shoot a lower one. Lower one? Probably a lower one if I shot bigger arrows. Like, I might change it if I shot bigger arrows. But I'm shooting a little X10s. So I think the middle one's fine. Um, how heavy are your X10 points? Do you like the heavier or lighter points? All right, so for X10 points, uh, I am a 120 point kind of guy. We got some sweet gold ones here that are a little dirty because I'm shooting my target. Um, I do 120 grains. I know if Kevin's watching out there, Kevin Mathers, I know you're a 100s kind of guy, but you know what? I like the 120s, Kevin. Um, but yeah, 120 grains. Uh, I don't think I've ever used 140s. That's probably more for like compound or, or bare bow. Uh, from what I've heard, a lot of compounders like 130 grains or so. I could be wrong. <laughs> I don't shoot compound at all. <laughs> so uh, uh, that could be the case. Uh, 100 grains though, since I, since I actually, I literally do sell these points. Um, they're available at shoreshutarchery.org. Uh, 100 grains is the most popular uh, from my sales. Um, 120s are the second most popular. And it, I guess it just... A lot of it has to come down to, I guess, how people... Uh, or how you view the performance. So, kind of paraphrasing, kind of taking what Kevin... Uh, has, has told me he's, he's big into you know testing things himself he's a hundred grain point guy you know he basically has like the same setup as Brady um, he says the hundred grains are great because you get more speed out of the arrow you know this is for 70 meters we're not talking about 18 here um, you get more speed out of the arrow because the arrow balances out you know it stops wiggling back and forth before it hits the target at 70. He, f he figures it stops at like 60 meters or so, maybe a little bit sooner. And then it's, it's just, you know, the vibrations out of it's just, it's just sailing. But it gets there sooner. He said for the 120s, the vibration comes out sooner, maybe in like 35 meters or, or, or maybe even closer to that, maybe 30 meters. And then it's just sailing that whole time. But it's doing it slower because it's 20 grains more. And he feels that that makes the 100 superior. Again, I might be missing a couple points. For me, though, 120 grains is great because, one, I know how the arrow is going to tune. I, I would have to play with arrow sizes. But besides that, from a flight perspective, yes, they may fly a little bit slower, but the overall weight of the arrow is a little bit heavier. So, in my mind, yes, it's slower, but it's getting less affected by the wind because you have to take a lot more wind to really blow this. So, while I am barely aiming off in a light breeze, it seems like, and I can't speak for them, but it seems like the 100 grain people are aiming off more than I'm aiming at a light breeze. And when it's really blowing, they're aiming off more but basically the same as I'm aiming off when, when, when it really starts blowing. Because again, their arrows are going faster, so they have to aim off with a, with a lighter breeze. But once it starts really blowing, because it's going faster, they get there. I, again, I think it's, it comes down to you know, how you're taught to tune and, again, how you're shooting it. There's, there's so many factors. I don't, I don't think there's a superior one between the 120 or the 100. 
I think it's just how you're how you're taught and just how you set up your bow and your arrows. Uh, that was probably more information than you wanted, but uh, there you have it. <laughs> did, I, uh, did I answer his question? I hope I answered his question. I think so. <laughs> um, did you compare groups between the 120 and the 100? No. I can now because I, I sell my own points. <laughs> but um, previously, I was not fortunate enough to have enough points to validate breaking off the 20 grains just to shoot groups to see if they were better or not. I wasn't taking that chance. I knew the 120s worked and I didn't want to play with it. In the future, that will be a thing. Uh, again, currently, I literally have no points here uh, besides the ones in my arrows. Uh, <laughs> I'm sold out of points, so I, I can't do that. Um, but I, no, I will. No, that, that is a really good point, and it'll really get Kevin going. If anybody knows Kevin, he's a fun guy. <laughs> get him going. Tell him that 120 points are superior. Watch him <laughs> Watch him turn turn red. Uh, also, pricing, 120 grains, $120 plus shipping. <laughs> just uh, just going to put myself out there. Oh, okay. Somebody asked me about limbs. All right. Click this puppy out. See, I'm not having any issues. This this white you see, this like clear you see here, that's just the little like caps. They, it's like a silicone sticky they put on there, and I figured that was to stop the limbs from creaking. Because uh, some of the Hoyt limbs would creak, or other brands' limbs would creak too, because the limbs clear coat was rubbing on uh, the limb bolt, and that seems to stop that. Um, there really isn't any marks on uh, on the bottom part either. I think it looks really good. That's why I was excited about them because um, I got to be getting close to 60,000 arrows on these. And uh, they're still looking fantastic. Oh, same thing with this one. Still looks good. You know, a little bit here and there, but that's that's nothing compared to the past. I have the same on the other side. amount of marks. On the front? No. No, front's fine. Hopefully, hopefully you see that. Look, I'll put my face real close. It's 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 on face facial uh, uh, follow so, but now good on that one. Again, those are just the little like silicone things they have on there. Uh, same thing with this one. Were the limbs connected to string tension technology? Just just a little bit. It's tiny though. I, I in in my opinion, honestly, from what I've seen from other Hoyt limbs or just limbs in general. This is nothing. This is this is fantastic. For 60,000 shots, in my opinion, they, they, they basically look brand new. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I have a set. You know what? I might have a set. I might have those... I think those quattros upstairs. There's that point on the back. That point on the back. On the back of the limb. Like, there's a tiny little bit, but it's not cracking it. It just, it just rubbed... It's just from the uh, the tension system rubbing on the limb. It's not like it's it's not falling apart. If it was falling apart, that would be a, that would be an issue. I would I would personally contact Hoyt and see what they have to say about it. Um, same thing with this one. No, like nothing nothing coming apart. Just just from rubbing and it clicking in. Nope. 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 Didn't do that one right. Mm -hmm. Anthony doesn't know how to work limbs anymore. Um, in general, someone said, at 18 meters, they use 2213X7s. Nice and slow and better for line cutters. 2213X7s. It's not really a question, it's just in general. Oh. I, I would use. Uh, hold on, we're going to stretch. Oh. And if we are already here, how good is the. Fitment between the limbs and the riser. I don't know. Fitment feels seems I good. Some strange wiggle I didn't have with my GMX. Oh really? All right, hold on. Let's let's destring it again. All right, 
Let's see. Back and forth. Not really, not really anything. Obviously, up and down, you're going to get that, but... They said sorry to make you read. No, I, I, I don't think so. I, I, you know, obviously we're not comparing it to anything, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't seem noticeably bad. Um, I don't know if it's excellent, but it definitely doesn't seem bad. I, it, I would say standard. I don't think it's, it's mine at least is not worse or any better than any other bow. Then again, you know, thank you for pointing this out because I honestly have not paid a lot of attention to how that fits, you know. I don't know. They don't. Nope, nope. There goes the state laws. Like maybe there's a little. If I go way out, there's a little more wiggle. Like. The dovetail spring is springy and not locked dead. Yeah, it's springy. Would you? Oh, so you would? You would? You're saying you would rather like have it like connected in? I think somebody does. Quits. I'm probably wrong, but um, uh, is somebody sells a mod? I think a modification for that, where you run the bolts all the way through. I could be wrong. It might increase the performance because there, there literally would not be any movement. Um, that's interesting. I don't know. You, you proposed very, very interesting questions. Now... <laughs> Is it? Okay, it's not just me. Yeah. That's toxic 5000 in case you want well, thank you for bringing up something that I wasn't totally looking at. Now, I know people in the past have locked in uh, their limbs where they've taken uh, this piece out and actually have had a long screw that runs all the way through into their, their dovetail. I think that's still legal. I personally have never tried it. Um, you'd, have to, you'd have to look. Um, but I also don't know, I don't know if anybody's currently doing that. But we can try it out at some point. Um, I, <laughs> I feel bad. Everybody gives me all these great video ideas. And there's all these things I really want to try. But it's, you know, between, you know, doing all my archery stuff and then, like, working a regular job. It, it's tough, uh, it's tough uh, making that all happen. Um... Did anybody say something about breaking out the uh, the old weight limbs? No? Okay. Because I, I had offered. I didn't know if anybody want, wanted me. Because I have some that, that look pretty bad, I think. Hanging so around. They have had right. issues and they um, want to know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, would, ask, I, would, I, would, I would bring that up to Hoyt. Because they, they, they need to know. They, they at least need to be told about it. If they don't know themselves, like Hoyt needs to be told, hey... This happened to my limb. I don't know if they'll do anything, because it, it 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 it'll probably fall under like oh well this is just normal wear and tear, but if they're being told about it, it at least it's it should be at least on their mind. Like I would I would hope as as a, as a company they would they would keep track of that stuff, and I think they do because honestly I I feel like this bow here has been built better than some of the others in the past and in terms of like limb delaminations um i no, obviously this has been an odd year but i i don't think there has been one in like the last maybe one or two i've heard about in like the last two years and some of the older models of limbs especially like the quattros and stuff people had warped ones people had delaminating ones and it was like a constant thing there was almost there was almost one delaminating a tournament. It was it was pretty bad, and a lot of people were you know upset, and like I can't blame them. That's crazy, um, but I I have I do feel like they definitely up their quality control. But I'll, I'll keep an eye out and, and ears out. You know I'll 
I'll see what other people have to say. So I, I appreciate you sharing. Uh, anybody else have any questions? No? All right. So that was quite the event. I really appreciate everybody coming out. I think we basically had like 30 people on at one point, right? Pretty awesome. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm going to shoot. I, I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to shoot the second half tomorrow because this runs from 8 a.m. Eastern time to 8 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. So I'm going to shoot the second half tomorrow. We'll do another live stream. I'm off from work, so I can do archery. So we'll do a live stream. I'll see everybody then. Um, how does 1230 sound again, everybody? <laughs> uh, we can make it a date if you want. I'll dress up probably in this same attire. Uh, we can hang out, bring your questions. Um, maybe I might try some other interesting things. I have an idea. Make a little more world copy. We'll, we'll, we'll see, though. <laughs> um, other than that, though, really appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, new videos rolling out. I am purchasing computer parts uh, in the, probably next week or so uh, to fix my editing computer so we can roll out some Tons and tons and tons of videos because I am, I am backlogged to to know tomorrow, uh, and yeah, that's about it. If you want cheap cheap points again, <laughs> uh, hundred grain points, hundred dollars, hundred twenty grain points, hundred twenty dollars, hundred forty grain points, hundred forty dollars. You, you can you can get on the waiting list. I'm sorry, demand was too high. Uh, other than that, thank you again, and as always, happy shooting. All right, Dr. Judy, uh, time to, you got to go and hit 